Hello recruit and welcome to the ISA. You have been selected to take part in a mission that will be critical to our continuing efforts to colonize TRAPPIST-1F. You'll begin your training soon, but first we need to be certain that you're ready. I'm Commander Flint and I will be with you throughout your mission, both here on Earth as you travel to TRAPPIST-1F and once you are on planet. Follow the instructions in the message below in order to access your first training exercise. Good luck. The people of Earth are counting on you. So the clip you just watched will be the introductory message that students receive when they enter my game project, which is turning my chemistry class into a quest. The quest will be based on a hypothetical mission to a Earth-like planet called TRAPPIST-1F, which is about 40 light years away, and I'll deal with the whole 40 light years thing at some point using a, a fictional Van de Broek drive. But students will enter the class as a mission. They will train, which will cover some of the basic aspects of chemistry, the data analysis, the measurement and use of equipment. That'll be all uh, quested as part of their training before they leave on their mission. The mission will take place in two parts. It will be the journey to TRAPPIST-1F, where along the way they'll have to deal with some emergencies or other situations that will require the use of chemistry knowledge. And then when they arrive on the planet, they'll be arriving at a prefabricated colony base. It's uninhabited, but there will be a problem with the base that they'll have to solve. And along the way, there'll be some other games that are incorporated. Uh, I'll show you some examples of those in just a minute. The reason I wanted to do this project is when I tell people I teach chemistry, the reaction is usually something like, oh, like on purpose you do that? Wow. And that's not that far off from the reaction most of my students have when they come into my class. They you know, can't do science, they hate science, or science hates them. And it's just not an experience that I want them to have because I think science should be enjoyable. So I'm going to gamify the class, turn it into a quest-based learning environment. And also, I just think that the whole quest-based uh, learning model will really help to motivate them and view it less as the chore that many of them see it as now and much more as something they can engage with and really work at throughout the year. So that's my plan. Hopefully, I'll be able to bring it to fruition. I'm, I'm already planning out the first um, unit and I'm going to put that up on the screen now. This is a, a rough idea of what the quest structure will look like for the first unit. Some of the first things that they'll do will be much like what we did in this class. They'll take some, uh, fill out some in introductory data and uh, take the personality test, the game styles test, and then create a reflection log of some kind that they'll be adding to throughout the year as part of their assessments. And then they'll work through a series of missions and quests. Some examples will be at the beginning, uh, they have to learn about measurements. So I'll have them create their own system of measurements. And they'll have to uh, standardize that somehow. And then the next step will be trying to communicate it with other teams. And this is where you get into the whole concept of how do we, why do we need a standardized system of units like the metric system? When they try to communicate with other groups, they won't be able to do it as easily. So we'll eventually arrive at the metric system and other um, equipment that they'll have to use that will all be part of their training. A couple of other areas to look at in this first sequence will be that they will have uh, an optional mission, which will be the random science question. So the first part of this mission will be asking a random science question. It doesn't have to be about chemistry, just something that they're curious about. And then the second part of that will be to answer another student's random science question. So there's two parts to it. In both cases, they're going to end up learning something about some aspect of science, which may or may not be chemistry, but just trying to get that uh, inquisitive aspect going. There will also be another optional mission where they will, after they complete their safety training, lab safety training, they'll do a report on an accidental uh, discovery in science. There's certainly been a lot of those. So I'll give them some choices or let them find their own of those. Also, on the other side of the quest tree here, we have some quests that will be restricted to the honors level students. And that's something that will be uh, done by team. So you have to be a member of the honors team in order to get access to these quests at this time. 
And this is one of the aspects that I'm still working on is uh, there's the different levels and in some cases the sequencing is very close. In some cases there are entire sections that for example the honor students will do that the uh, lower levels will not do. And so those will only be available to those kids. So that's another aspect of the Quest uh, system and the, the Resley system in particular that I'm planning to use, uh, that we use in this class, that will allow me to differentiate uh, not only within each class, but also the different levels of class all within one overall Quest structure. Once they get underway on their mission to TRAPPIST-1F, they'll encounter different issues that they have to address using their scientific knowledge, such as uh, calculating the amount of fuel that they'll need for their reactor. Then there'll be some games that they play along the way, some of them which will just be uh, for fun, but also, of course, as part of the learning aspects. Some examples of the games will be like this one, which I call This game is based rummy. on the gin rummy, except that we have ions instead of regular cards, and each card also has a point value assigned to it. So the way the game works is you want to go out by making matches and laying down cards. But you earn points by laying down cards, but you can also be penalized if someone else goes out while you still have cards in your hand, you get penalized by the number of points in your hand. So you can play this strategically in one of two ways. You can lay down your cards as quickly as possible. So in this case, I could get rid of two sodiums, which are each one plus, and match that with sulfite, a polyatomic ion, the minus two. So that would earn me six points. However, and it would get rid of three cards. However, uh, I also have seven or five points in my hand. So it almost cancels itself out if someone goes out on the same hand. Instead, I could play calcium, which is a plus two, with sulfite, which is a minus two. And that would only get rid of two cards, but the point value here is seven earned, and I am only left with four in my hand. So net, I would end up with more points. So the strategy is, do you want to go out quickly, or do you want to try to maximize your points and minimize the, the liability that you have in your hand? And those are the options that you have for different styles of gameplay. Later on, when we learn about the periodic table, we'll play another game, which will be probably a modified version of what you're about to see. And I'm going to make it a little bit more of a, a sort of combat style card game, but it's essentially an adaptation of the game War using periodic table properties. So here's a look at that. This is a card game based on the game Uno with elements for the cards. So every card has uh, an element, a characteristic like ionic radius, and a score, which is that element's ionic radius, for example. Every player has an equal number of randomly distributed cards to start the play. The first player lays down a card. The next player can play either the same element with a different characteristic or the same characteristic with a higher value. So we could say here's lithium on top of lithium, but with electronegativity instead of ionic radius. And then the next card, we can go with electronegativity, but it has to have a higher value. So this is aluminum, which has a 1.61 greater than 0.98. The next player will play electronegativity of carbon, which is higher, 2.55. And then the last one in this example would be another carbon, but with ionization energy instead of uh, electronegativity. If you don't have a card to play, you draw a new card from the pile, from the, the deck, and play continues until one player runs out of cards and that player is the winner of the round. The final mission uh, at the end of the year will be an adaptation, as you're going to see, of uh, an activity I've done in the past and been developing off and on for a few years. So here's a look at what that will look like. This quest will be an adaptation of an adaptation of a number of assignments uh, that I use every year in my chemistry class. And they're all some variation of the same theme. They're given a list of alien elements or alien names for elements. All the elements are the same, of course, everywhere in the universe, but they have different names on the alien periodic table. The assignment is for the students to determine which alien names correspond to which Earth elements based on the descriptions and the properties that they're given. So I've expanded on this for this assignment, and in this case, the challenge is translating a message that's been delivered by this alien group, this unknown alien group called the Wanderers. And in order to translate the message, they have to first decipher the alien periodic table. And what I'll be doing for this assignment is breaking up these messages into different parts 
giving it to different groups, and possibly even spreading it out throughout the course of the year in different components so that they don't have the entire message until the end of the year. This will be a culminating activity in which they'll need all of the knowledge that they've gained throughout the year, everything from the different subatomic particles to physical versus chemical properties, electron configurations, density, gas laws, um, stoichiometry and reactivity of elements, acids and bases, all of the things that we've learned throughout the year will be tied into this one last assignment when they get to the planet. Uh, Trappist 1F, they will get this message, which will be a test of their knowledge. And then they will eventually get a message at the end that's from the alien race. And that will be the last activity of the year. And all of the um, missions and quests will be based as much as possible on real scientific principles. Obviously, they'll have to apply real scientific knowledge in order to solve the, the quests. But there'll be uh, things similar to uh, popular fiction like Contact and The Martian, um, also based on reality such as the Biosphere 2 incident and the problems they had on the Apollo missions. So I, I've got different exercises that work on variations of those themes that I will be all incorporating into this one quest that will last throughout the year. So they'll level up through the system, uh, they'll have roles. I'm still working on how to break up the roles because I want them all to be related to chemistry. So I'm not sure if the, the structure that we have where there's command and security and science and engineering and flight will be as effective. I may end up doing that, but I'm also looking at maybe breaking it out more into something like uh, engineering versus biochemistry and life sciences. And so giving them different aspects of the science to work with throughout special missions that all have to uh, get through the basic requirements, but the optional missions will be uh, things that might pertain more to A, their gaming style, and B, their interests. So uh, if someone has more of an interest in biology, I could work on some more life science, biochemistry stuff for them. And if they're more of an engineering type, maybe some more material science and things. So to really try to make those connections. And then we'll move on from there through the same units that we I do every year, uh, but this will now be in the form of the quest with the quest branching and optional side missions and core missions, also team and individual raids. And that will be my mission for the next year. Thank you.